hi, my name is Jessica Gladstone. I'm a graduate student in the Department of Human Development and Quantitative Methodology at the University of Maryland. And I'm here today with Dr. Andrew Martin, who is a professor of educational psychology in the School of Education at the University of New South Wales in Australia. Dr. Martin specializes in motivation, engagement, achievement, and quantitative methodology. So thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. The first question that I have for you is, when thinking about motivation and engagement, do you see motivation and engagement as being interchangeable terms or that they are completely distinct constructs? Yeah, that's a good question. And I think one we, uh, we're always wrestling with. And so uh, I guess, it, although as a general principle, they're distinct, the researcher will always need to be be sensitive to and mindful of, of the context in which um, these two things are operationalized. And, uh, and when they're clear in, in framing this to the reader, the reader can interpret that appropriately. And the distinctiveness or synergy of the two constructs can also be interpreted appropriately. So the next question I have is, in the study of engagement, there are many different views about how many dimensions or factors actually make up student engagement. We're interested in knowing what your current view is on how many dimensions should be included in the study of student engagement. I guess I see this answer in terms of um, positioning and, and conceptualizing uh, engagement in terms of its higher order uh, factors and its and its lower order factors and so the higher order factors are more of the uh, encompassing broader um, areas of engagement if you like and so um, look I'm still I'm, I'm, I'm still I'm comfortable with the with the tripartite demarcation of engagement that that was proposed uh, you know, a number of years ago in terms of behavioural engagement, cognitive engagement and emotional engagement as, as, as overarching constructs. Again, though, it'll depend on the study and its purpose as to which of those is salient. Uh, and so, however, I also think there's probably just a, a, a relative handful of these higher order engagement factors. In contrast, I think there's a... a a, a wide range and number of lower order engagement constructs. So my third question, and you've touched on this a little bit, is what current strengths and obstacles do you see in the measurement of student engagement? Although there's a proliferation of engagement measures, and I'll get to that because I've, I've, I've played, shown my hand in terms of what I think is an obstacle. Um, I think I think we're good on measurement. Well, I think we're very good at at offering guidance and, and insight into how to disentangle uh, and operationalize the multi-dimensionality of engagement. Um, in terms of obstacles, interestingly, all the obstacles are sort of the flip side of the strengths. Uh, and so I did note the proliferation of engagement constructs, and I think we really uh, uh, do try and disentangle that. Uh, and so I do feel for students and early career researchers entering the field and hitting a veritable wall of engagement constructs that they have to wrap their head around. You know, and, and the bar is always raised on, on what is expected of us statistically. And, uh, and so we need to, and whilst, whilst I, I, I applaud statistical sophistication, I think it's also important on us to, to be uh, good translational researchers, not only in the engagement space, but with other constructs. So the last question I have for you, as someone who's looked at a lot of cultural differences is, do you think that there are cultural differences that need to be taken into account when thinking about the generalizability of student engagement findings rather than making it a blanket that covers everyone? But in terms of uh, when we do cross-cultural research either between countries or within countries, different ethnic groups, cultural groups within countries, when it comes to measurement, particularly with motivation engagement, uh, we've asked the question, are there differences of degree um, and or are there differences of kind between cultures, ethnic groups, or any groups for that matter? Um, this isn't to say that uh, the same engagement factors, you know, there, there are not some factors that are unique to some cultures. Um, I guess my point is it's to disentangle what is somewhat pan-human and what is distinct. Great. 
right. Well, those are all the questions I have for you today. So I, I really want to thank you for joining us today. It was really, really great hearing your insight and thoughts about student engagement and all the new things that are happening. So I can't wait to, to see some of this more new stuff. Terrific. Thanks very much for asking the questions. Yes, thank you.